We're all going to make a start. Evening all. Evening. 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 Call for joining. Evening. Uh, you can leave yourselves unmuted. Just if you've got a telly on, on in the background or something, then uh, we'll let you know. Let's see if there's anybody have questions. Uh, Keith, I've seen him. Colin's here. Donna. Graham B for Gloucester. Graham, are, Hiya. You, are you here? Yes. Good man. I don't want it turned. I don't want to be seen. Use your shows up when you're shows. Please. Okay. Done is here. Please. Okay. That don't matter. Right then, let's get going. What right, first photo? That's Paul from down the plot. <laughs> As you can see, he's vegetarian. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Right, this one. <clears throat> this chap sent me a uh -huh. message and he bought an agar cooker from a lady that owned a manor. From what I'm told, she'd had the old agar for over 100 years. Obviously, it was a wooden uh, solid fuel one. It was fitted between two walls on either side of the wooden boards. It had to be removed. The guys removed the boards. There was tons of tons of vermiculite. So good for me. And uh, <coughs> I was just tried trial and error. So he bought a lot of them, obviously, because it was free. And he's put some seeds in. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> there was a uh, soot in it as well, which is, uh, as you know, if you have a gardener, tomatoes love soot. In fact, there's quite a few things that like soot. So he's going to let us know what he does with him. <clears throat> Paul's chilies. He's uh, put some more in. Scorpion peach. And uh, I saw them during the week. <coughs> oh, the colours on them are beautiful. Mm. Mm. I bought them today. I bet them are bloody odd. I bought them today. What variety do they make? I don't know. I'll be trying to find out. Bob know. Marley. Who? Who? Bob, Bob Marley. Bob, Bob Marley, Marley, that means a bell R. Yeah. Four, nine, eight, seven. You should have given it. It's a cross of the days that she's in different positions. And it doesn't matter exactly it's, where she's from, as long as she's generally back that way. Somebody got a telly on. It's not that that matters anymore. Um, so. We've got background interference somewhere. Which one did you order? So we're shaking it. I don't know. Right, yes. right, this photo was from the um, camera I've got on site. This was to cut, catch trespasses. Well. I don't like the square one as much. It is a photo of a bear. It looks like a badger, but it is not. Look at the head. It's a bear. <laughs> it's eating all my bloody beach. I know. I could drop the bugger. <laughs> Keith. Yeah. These are yours, mate. Right. Uh, well, that's my garden beginning of the week. I'm down in Surrey. Uh, beyond the archway, I used to grow, that was all vegetables with a tunnel, but I was uh, struggling due to the, as you can see, top left, the very high trees. Yeah. And the ones in the middle have just been lopped uh, a couple of months ago. And uh, they go, so when this estate was built, in the 50s, I think somebody went around with a lorry load of Leylandi ice selling them to everybody, <laughs> put them in as uh, hedging. So they're about 40, 40 foot plus now, uh, struggling to get people to cut them down. But uh, that that is now sort of just lawn and uh, borders with uh, flowers. But uh, all snow's gone today. We had a bit of rain and it's you know, it's thawing out a bit, so uh, Good. that's that one. Oh, those are my uh, greenhouses. I've got a little one. That one is a six-foot square, which uh, I use for just growing um, small fruited tomatoes and some cucumbers in. And the big one I use for just about anything else I can get in there, propagating and that. So uh, needs a bit of a sort out. Can I ask which part of Surrey you're from, please? Chobham, near Woking. Oh, right. I was, I was from Walton on Thames. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, not far away. Not far away. Yeah. 
Yeah, that one you can see the uh, big trees and uh, the frost, but um, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a problem on the estate. Where, whereabouts in relation to that picture, whereabouts are your greenhouses? Uh, bottom left, the if uh, if you go in the sort of um, left hand side where there's a border with a couple of barrels on it, just before there, so it would be bottom left hand corner. <laughs> oh, right, so I see, yeah, yep, you got yeah. it, yeah, yeah, so yeah, bottom left hand corner at this end, right at this end of the garden. I'm with you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, uh, that's uh, that's my. I've got uh, three. It's three coming a bit turkey. There in a, in a patch. Hang on a bit, mate. Them two are whispering in the background. And what you've got to do is mute yourself, then you can talk normal. Yeah, it's great. Do the whispering as loud as the talking. Yeah. <laughs> mute your microphones. Who's whispering? Whispering. Just, just mute yourself. Top left, yes, and the mute. I think it's. I think someone's got the telly on quiet, haven't they? No, no it's whispering. Yeah, it's whispering. We can hear everything that they're saying, though. So I hope it's <laughs> not whispering about anything. <laughs> so, That's uh, having a cosy Valentine's night. I was thinking that. Yeah, <laughs> I heard upstairs mentioned. <laughs> All yours, Keith. Back to you. Right. Uh, right. That's one of my allotments. I've got. I've got three, uh, two next to each other. They're not massive. They're about um, 10 metres by 20 metres long. We've got two next to each other and one that goes across the back. Um, this one here uh, is my second year on it. Uh, used to be owned by a lady and a gentleman. The gentleman was 94 and the lady was 90. And they... They worked it non-stop, but unfortunately, the uh, chap James had an accident and passed away, and the ladies moved away. So when I took this on, I got a four meter by three meter Kida greenhouse, and the plots were a bit, uh, the ground around it was a bit iffy. I bought the small green one down from home and a few other bits, and then I managed to get some boards from a shop that was being knocked down, uh, made some raised beds. But I was lucky enough to pick up that, that greenhouse. The Bikida greenhouse was in sight when I moved in. It took me a year to uh, dig it all over and get, get it sorted. But um, yeah, that, that's uh, one of my plots. Real. <laughs> uh, right, those two, but I don't know if anybody's ever done that ever does sort of pure no dig because these two long beds yeah. were full of autumn raspberries really really old with um lots of uh, bindweed and everything so i just cut them down to ground level put a put me mower over it and just uh scalped it down to ground level put four layers of cardboard Mm. soaked it and put barrel loads of just well rotted compost on top mm. grew black brassicas in them last year and they grew really well and when i've i thought right i'll dig it over this year hard, except for one patch uh there's hardly any weeds uh bind root bind weed or anything oh. and it'd be two years under the cardboard so uh it did work but i thought i'd give them a dig over this year and then uh sort it out but the, those two i will hopefully get some boards and get those into raised beds at some stage real nice right, that's inside the key to greenhouse some broad beans and shallots the shelving there on i um managed to get hold of a couple of uh it's called grid wall uh, display uh grills from uh, shop fitting and I've suspended them with chains to the centre bar of the polytunnel and then double cable tied them to a, a ridge pole, uh, a pole along the side, and then just swing them down. So when I finish with them, I'll just unclip them and let them swing down and they'll just, just be uh, against the uh, side of the polytunnel and out the way for, um, for, the, uh, for the summer. 
Oh, that's, that's just the same again. They're hay tifting or shallops. Uh, just started those off um, just around around Christmas time. Look very healthy, Keith. Okay? <laughs> They're going really well. Really pleased yeah. with those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Green yeah, as really the morning. Good. Have you got Have you got any heat in that that polytunnel, or is it just no, cold? No, nothing at all. No, no heat at all. It just, it, it's amazing because that that key to plastic <coughs> is really quite thick. And I was down there today. It was cold outside. Um, amazing the difference inside the tunnel. Mm. You know, three or four degrees, I think, I would say. And mm. Just no wind. You know, it really does make a difference. All right, that's just another one of the garden. The greenhouses would be that concrete path, bottom left-hand yeah, corner, yeah. basically runs straight into the greenhouse. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, so that, another one there. See where them trees would be a pain in the Irish here. Sorry? I can see where the trees would be a pain. Yeah, yeah. All right, All yeah. right this is uh, the assorted jungle in the bigger greenhouse. I've, I've never grown, I think you grew these mixed saffron onions That's last right. year. Yeah, good keeper. And, yeah, so I've got those. And then uh, there's some brown, some red cabbage there, uh, giant red cabbage just coming on. I've got some red Brunswick um, and some other bits and pieces there. I do have a problem of I do tend to, um, when everything I put, nip anything back in the garden I do tend to try and root it so I end up with umpteen amount of uh, plants and that because that orange flower top left is off a, when I was pruning back some abutilon so I just put them in some pots in the corner and they've rooted so I've now got four or five abutilons I've got to find homes for. I think we'll all like that Keith when we get the bug. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, right, there's some um, some of my onions, bigger onions, waiting to be uh, potted on. I potted those on this weekend. Uh, I got that. That was seed I got. I got from John Salisbury some seed. Sowed that in uh, November. So they're really coming on quite well. Good. Not me that knows about the leaves. Some leeks. Uh, Blanche leeks, again, they've been potted on this week. Um, I've never grabbed the lamberis, this one. I normally, I've got some pendle, but I thought I'd try some <coughs> lamberis, and they're growing, growing quite nicely. Ah, right. Mm. Now, I chased him round, um, my wife and I, we went for a walk to a National Trust place and uh, <coughs> saw this heron. And whenever I tried to get near to him to take a photo, he was off. He didn't fly. He just literally, the water was could only be more than 18 inches deep, something like that. So he just kept walking all the, out of the way behind trees. And eventually I cornered him. And I thought it was quite a nice picture with the shadows and that. Mm. It was a bit of fun trying to catch him. You don't get many of them in the black country. <laughs> Uh, and this is um, what, what I sent you, Mick. This is mine, yeah. Solanum album, white potato vine. Just got it in the bottom left-hand corner of the garden on the fence. And it, it thrives like anything. Once it gets settled, and it puts on a lovely um, lovely display, the white ones. It's got a blue one as well. So they're quite nice. What's the name of that, that case again? It's a Solanum, S O L. A M O N Solanum N A M Solanum Alba Alba Keith, Keith. I, I had the blue version of that, it was called Glasnevin Christian. Yeah, I've got the blue one as yeah. well. Yeah, they're bit, I think they're really nice, really yeah. hardy as well. Make so, good cover, potato family as well. In it, nice, yeah, shape. that's right. Yeah, 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 flowers just look just like the uh. Potatoes, you, uh, flowers you get on your spuds. Yeah. Mm. Right. Is, it, is it invasive at all, or no, no? no. It, okay. um, it it just go. It, it's pretty good. I just give it a chop back every couple of years, and it's quite good. Mm. Uh, this little orchid, uh, my wife got given that as a present, and had a little flower on it three, four years ago, 
and we've looked after it. It's the first year it's flowered again. Uh, it's really, really nice, beautiful it is. Yeah. I love my orchids. Yeah, no. no, they're really nice. So that's just the um, that's just the allotment without the snow on it after I dug it. But uh, the site I'm on is, if you can imagine, I've got that plot, one to the right and one across the back. Then to the left, there's a ridge that runs right along. So that I've got all that half. And then the other side, there are one, two, three, four, six small plots. So we're only like a nine plot site. That, that's all we've got. Yeah. But there are about... 10 allotment sites in, in the village but they all range from sort of four or five allotments up to you know 15 or 20 so they're all dotted all over the place Good. Very, the one problem i've one problem i've got on my sorry mate the one problem i've got on my site is what you got badgers yeah pain in the irish I've spent three months fortifying all the fences. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've had to do errors completely. Yeah. Having said that, we've had no problem for the last 18 months. Ah, uh, right. Now, the, I'm, I've got Some three months. badger sets um, surrounding the bo bottom corner of uh, yeah. the site. We had no problems last year, but this year they've really gone to town. Oh. But I'm, I'm convincing them that there's good food the other side of the allotment site. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, Colin. Sure, a bit. He's just going for the piddle. Thanks for that, Keith. Good man. Yeah. Pleasure. Now, yo, lot. If you're interested, if you want to do a couple of photos for next week, and uh, obviously you got to talk the way through them. Was uh, for me to write it all down and then read it out. It's uh, for people, and just let us know what you're doing and all this crap. Right, this is back in the garage. Wow. These are meat onions from last year, saffron, which Keith had mentioned, plus a couple of others. Every two weeks, ten days, I check all my onions, make sure there's none going stuffed, same as your tapers. Me? A squeeze. What, what's, what's the variety of that onion again, please? Saffron. There's, there's tough ball in there as well. How are you spelling that? S A W F R A I N E. I've got Have a look at them. That looks nice. Just put one in if, if you want to save the ink in your pen. Select seeds, they flog them. Right, this is me getting the paper this morning down the paper shop. He's the only man in Colligate to have his, his front door wide open. Can <laughs> 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 we open oh, the back door to let the hound out and the bloody gale blows in? And yeah. his, his door is open permanent. All right, Pen. Right, this is Perks of being chairman. This is on our plot. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Oh, I wish. I had to have a word with these. No oh, mask, no. nothing. No mask. <laughs> I bet that wasn't taken today. You bloody water. <laughs> Plus something else. This happened today as well. We had a... Uh, you can see better there. But a pipe oh, burst. Oh, yeah. It oh, just God. cut away, luckily. But luckily, we got a, a chap on site and he likes doing his plumbing job. So we'll leave it up to him. So, go to that chap out as well. Right, plug it in. Graham. Put it in this here. Graham B, where are you? Yeah. Good man, you're on. No, 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 not me. Another no. Graham. Graham B. Yeah, yeah. Right, this is Graham Barrett from uh, Gloucester. He's a big uh, veg. Amy, Amy, what are you doing? You're pulling it out of me here. And uh, the land is opposite. You don't have to. The nursery. Why don't you do that? If you speak that's in the background, that's, that's like a polytunnel, like what we've got on our allotment. Are you going to pull that in or not? Because you're going to break it. Whoever's speaking in the background, can you mute yourself, please? Jim B, mute. If you can't mute from here, then we call get the people to speak. Yeah. Right, this is uh, Graham's plot. Uh, he's, he's got land. Well, it's, it's somebody's field, basically. It's nice and secure. Nice and flat. Mm. Which means it is flat, but we do get the floods, which we've had quite a bit of. But because it keeps loading up with manure every year, then it is going to get the drainage because, basically, it's a raised bed to the rest of the field, as you can see there. 
Where's my right up, Graham? All he goes down is uh, one spit depth as to what a plough would do. Uh, eight pumpkins, uh, green squash he does as well. There's two in the tunnel and two either side. Uh, so all he has is two pumpkins in here. There's two in a set. Don't forget, he's after the world record and he come bloody close last year. So okay. this is what it's all about. Whereabouts in the country, mate? Gloucester. Gloucester. He had uh, two tons of pig manure, 2,500 litres of compost spread out in the polytunnel. Oh, Work will do the work, it will then be rotivated before planting. Soil test. I'm just going out half an hour to try to get back. All, uh, outside, the land is got. You see the fruit trees behind because the chap opposite, he's got his own uh, orchard as well, fruit orchard, as you can see. Uh -huh. It's a bit blurred, but you can still see it. He had a soil test done, and uh, it's between 7.5 and 7.8. As you, uh, few of you will know, neutral is seven. So he had to put, go back on that one. <clears throat> he had to put 56 pound of sulfur crisps or chips, I should say, to try and bring the, bring it down closer to six, five. <sighs> and he's also deficient in magnesium. And, uh, but he'll add that as foliar feeds as he's growing up. <clears throat> Look at me. Just yes. quickly, looking at that lab report, any idea then which it costs to have your soil tested? I can find out for next week. Yeah. I've okay. used these before, land crop. I know they are expensive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I, I used to do it, say, once every five years. About that, 30 pounds, I think. Sorry? It used to be about 30 pounds a couple of years ago. I haven't used them recently. Yeah, it's, it's all according to what you have. That, that yeah, you yeah. the normal NPK. But then if you're on all your trace elements as well, which, you, which he did, then it costs a bit of dearer. But uh, I'll, I'll get the crap off you for next week. But I paid about 30 for... quid as well, Mick. The what? I paid about 30 quid as well for it. Yeah, good. Is that the yeah. lot? Yeah, yeah. That ain't too bad then. Real yeah. cheers, troops. Right, this was took a uh, local last week. The leaves are still there, yeah, They're on the ground a while, meaning collect them up. Uh, if you have got time, if you have got room, if they're there, use them. No, I've had quite a few questions during the week. Hi, oh, Mick. I'm just wondering on your opinion of spare mushroom compost. I have found a supplier for soil in my area, it says it has chicken manure, shredded wheat. Straw and just <coughs> in the mix. I said mushroom compost, brill. The other four ingredients are also brill. You jammy <laughs> shot. <laughs> I mean, if he can get mushroom compost and he's also <coughs> chicken with urinage and shredded wheat, that that is straw and gypsum. That is bloody excellent. Yeah. Because I used to get the shredded, well, not when shredded, but I used to get the wheat from the breweries with the, with the spent tops and the malt. And they started get, dishing the wheat out as well, which is <coughs> another natural product. So it's going to be excellent for either your compost heap or top dressing your raised beds. So he, he had a good dollop of this. And while we were on gypsum there, because our, it turned out, uh, I had another... Mate, quick question for you. Yes, yes, mate. So just normal beds outside. I've um, taken on, obviously, you've seen me polytunnel and land I've got. Yeah. Um, so the, the beds I've put in there, it's just normal soil. I've put down horse manure this year on top. They're still covered. Um, would you recommend mixing in compost manure on that? Because I've got a supplier just down the road for it. Uh, <clears throat> what have you put in at the moment? Just manure? Just horse horse manure. It's about two, I've got I've got um probably well quite big beds. Yeah, it's probably um ten meters by two meters. When you say he's got compost manure, what do you mean by compost manure? Sorry, mus mushroom mushroom spent compost. Oh, oh yeah, bloody hell, it's a beautiful stuff. If you can get it, it's difficult to get now, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's quite, quite cheap actually. I can get I can get probably 
It's around 90 bags of 60 litres for about 120 quid. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's, uh, is that from uh, Bristol? No, it's from Bridgewater. Because ah, my supplier, it, um, he was from Wolverhampton Way, he lost his contact. And I'll, send you, the, I'll send you the link, Mick. Um, they did, they do, contact, they did, and the yeah. biggest one was Bristol. Do they, do they, could you send it me, uh, Nick, please, as well? I'll get, I'll get uh, it for the ton. For our yeah, it, they, they do it by the, um, they do it by the dumpy bag, but it's yeah. cheaper doing it by the bag, 60 litres. I think it's about 20 quid a pallet of 45 bags. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, Nigel, it's excellent stuff. Look, there's one thing I was going to ask, chaps, with the mushroom compost, do you get any strays coming up during the season? Full yeah. of them. I used to years ago. I don't get any now. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones we get are full of them. You can pick all can your... Uh, the spore. Can, yes, can, can I ask a question in a minute? Yes, you can. Go on. Uh, well, while we're on the sort of mushroom compost, we have a recycling centre here in Gloucestershire. Um, you know, of all the green waste that comes in. Yeah. Um, what What do you reckon to that? Crap. Wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. <laughs> Anything oh, like right. that, it is rubbish. Wouldn't touch it with a barge pole because everybody who puts anything in the green waste, they're not selective. No. You, you get everything put in there and then it's just processed. Um, oh no, it's one to stay clear of, I think. Our local council flogged the um, compost they make for two quid a bag down the local tip. It is rubbish. The mm -hmm. city council, they can't give theirs away. That's how bad it is. It is. Oh, right. okay, good. Thank you very much. No, it's crap. But if, if anybody does get the mushroom compost, the spent mushroom compost, the, there are a few lumps in. So just rub the lumps out by hand. Well, it's mixing with anything else, top dressing, beautiful stuff. <coughs> Rod Gibson, Roy from uh, Wolverhampton. Nigel, yeah, mate, Roy. Yeah. Yes, to bad Gibson. Right, this is a uh, agricultural Gibson because it's also used as a plaster. It's a natural soil conditioner, conditioner made up of seventy percent sulphur, twenty one percent calcium. Now, if you remember, I use eggshells and oyster shells as my calcium ingredient for my composting because I've never had to add lime or whatever. Gypsum has been used by farmers for over 150 years. It also aids coastal regions with high salt levels. Uh, I now use natural fertilizers on my raised beds, i.e. my compost plus manure and seaweed manure, plus my foliar feeds. Years ago, I used to use normal fertilizers, meaning the salts and build up. So at the end of the year, I had to drench all my raised beds, i.e. I'm washing out the salts from the fertilizers. Mm -hmm. This uh, gypsum does as well, or helps you out to get do it. So gypsum could also uh, aid your beds in this way, also used to combat, combat celery heart rot. If anybody grows celery nowadays, I don't think there's many. Plus, you get less markings on your apples and your fruit. The garden farmer, I would guess the, the main use of gypsum, it helps to break up clay soil. It helps, the clay, uh, it helps to break up the clay particles in the soil. I think that was the main reason the farmers used to use it moons ago. Uh, Mick? Yes. Uh, could you, do you have a bag of gypsum somewhere that I can see what it is so I can yeah. get it here? You see if we have it. That, that's what I don't know like. the Flemish for gypsum. Yeah. That's what it looks like. That's the one I had off eBay this afternoon or Amazon, I should say. <coughs> yeah. 25k there. Okay, Next thank you. The agricultural one. Is there is there a dif difference? Is lime a, a different product, or are they similar to? Is it similar to gypsum? Oh. They got a tea urn going. <laughs> well, that's, that, that's our little hound, our cavapoo. <laughs> He's helping me break up my egg boxes for me composting. <laughs> There's a good one. Right, my raised beds are exactly the same as my compost bins. I'm taking the covers off and seeing if, if, if it's nice and moist. If it is nice and moist, the bacteria, worms, and fungi will get working for me. 
if it dries out, it will be ticking over. I want the soil to work. So if it needs it, I'll give it another watering and then I will cover it again. Good brew. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm doing next week. Couldn't do it this week because I've done me bloody back in, I don't know, if I was here last week. Right, when I was in the mob, I used to smuggle out the pipe to back it out for the old mob. If I was down there for the weekend, <laughs> when we used to go out on a, on a Friday, have a, a night on the aisle, I used to smuggle the pipe to back it out. And I used to post it up to him. I've still got them tins. Right, that's my growing cabinet in the loft. That's what it used to look like. I think that was this time last year. Nigel, remember to... Um, uh, off the for last year, but this year I ain't even started up yet. I just ain't got the input. What sort of does that tent make? Size four foot square. Okay, and then them T fives you got above it. Yeah, soil warming cable underneath in the sand. White plastic uh, repelling the heat and the light back onto the plants. A little fan on, but uh, I ain't even flashed it up this year. And I noticed this on the internet yesterday. The the late show is on at Malvern. And the, the, the advertising shows in June and July. So they've heard, they've heard some of it. Optimistic. Yeah. yeah. I don't think our show will be on because if they still have the six to six feet rule, then uh, our show is crap anyway. Mm. Colin, this is yours, eh? That one is, yeah. Um uh, the temperature, the picture before me, that's it. Uh, I think that was on Tuesday. Crazy. Minus five outside. Yeah. Right? Half past ten in the morning. That was the temperature. I had to open the greenhouse door because the, the, the sun had come up. Where was and, that? Uh, eh? Where was that? Malta. <laughs> 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 That, that was in Staffordshire Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, because when the sun comes up, uh, you know, it, 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 it just raises temperature. Yeah. And it, it was minus five outside. Where are you going? Up by Stone, mate? No, I'm, I'm in uh, Tamworth. All right. Staffordshire, yeah. He pays his rights and all. <laughs> oh, but I can't enough. In by the Reliant, I mean by the Reliant factory. Uh, not yes, two or three miles away from uh, where they made the Reliant. Yes, it's uh, it's all built on now, though I'm afraid. Ace to the ground. Um, there's some uh, daily tubers I've started off. I think I'm a little bit behind other people, but they'll catch up. Um, plunge them into uh, some nice moist compost. And I'll move them onto a uh, hot cable, um, give them some bottom heat, and now I'll start shooting. I'll take some cuttings of them. We'll see how we go. That's one place to over the gravel <coughs> cable underneath there, so they'll be nice and warm. Um, those are actually begonias there. I've started some off there. Another tray of begonias um, and some salvia cuttings to the bottom left. Um, I can't see what the seeds are. Uh, can't read that. But uh, just waiting. Germination seems to be. Begonias. Sorry? Begonias. All right. Germination seems to be very slow for me this year. I don't know why. I'll, I'll, I'll have to look to it. I, I still haven't, my peppers still haven't germinated. So I'm, I'm thinking of uh, re sowing. Um, but. Uh, that's what I do. I'll put uh, in the bottom of the basket, I'll, I'll put a little bit of that micro mesh in the bottom just to retain the um, the compost and then plunge the medallias or begonias in, keep them nice and moist. Um, that's my compost mixture, standard mixture, plenty of perlite, vermiculite. That's, that's the hot box salt fumer. I don't know if anyone else uses these. Um, <coughs> uh, now, brilliant! You just put um, uh, these for your aphids. Sorry, these for your aphids. 
Or in little chaps, in little horrors. Yeah, for for a, any sort of bugs, and also as a deterrent, not a cure, a deterrent for botrytis. Uh, and inside that can, there's a little cup. You put some uh, sulfur powder in, plug it in, and the sulfur powder liquidizes and then vaporizes, um, and it goes throughout the greenhouse. Uh, I put that on overnight three times a week. Um, oh, and I, next it, question. It's very, very successful. Um, I recommend them if you can get them. Yeah. There was a chap on uh, on Facebook selling them, a chap called Ian Burns. Um, he was selling them second hand. Um, and I'm trying to contact him to get one for me, but I don't, I don't know how many he's got left. But uh, he was selling them for twenty five quid a piece, um, and and uh, does anyone else use them? No, no. no? How about you, Nick? Nick, right? Do you? No, he's not. I've got one. I have. I have used them in the past. Um, I don't use them anymore. When I say oh. I don't use them, I, I've had one, but I don't feel the need to use them. I just um. Basically, on the polytunnels and greenhouses, I just sofa bomb the whole. I clean out at the end of the year and sofa bomb the whole greenhouse and mute it, kill everything, aphids, insects. It might sound a bit wrong, but I start with a clean greenhouse and then I um, spray regularly. Yeah, all right. Why did you stop using it, Nick? Wasn't you impressed? Um, I wouldn't say I, was, I wasn't impressed. I didn't think it made any difference from the um, using the sofa bombs. I think once you've got a clean environment, you've got clean soil, I think that, that that's the end of it. As long as you manage the um, compost and plants correctly, then I think um, I think you're okay. I mean, I'm, I'm growing in the 40s at the moment. I've got a lot going on. And, um, yeah. I've got a little bit of, a bit of fly activity. <coughs> But apart from that, I sort of spray it every seven to ten days and I see nothing at all. All right. OK. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's individual. You know, I find it very good. So, um, right, this is uh, <laughs> this is a uh, attempt at homemade compost. It's coming in backwards. That was... Jeez, oh. uh, yeah. Um Oh, it's all it's all back to front. This is um, that's that's the finished compost. Right. Yeah. Hang on, carry on. This is compost. Go on further, 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 further. There, that's just no. That's whoa. <laughs> Where are we go. <laughs> Where are we go. Right. That, uh, well, that's actually the remnants of my raised carrot bed. I'm still, I'm still uh, picking carrots out of it. See on there. There's a picture of my carrots somewhere, Mick. Oh, I've been that. Have you? No. You know, <laughs> the compost. All right. There's the compost. Uh, my my method of composting. I put put everything into that. Um, that's uh, four foot cube. Everything goes in, just pile it in and then keep piling it up and it sinks down. And then I empty the large one out and and put the middle of the large one into this smaller one, which I've just emptied. So I'm, that's a job I need to do. Um, and then empty it out in, uh, empty the small one out into what I call finished compost, which is a pile there that I'm just digging out. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of that I have used um, the same method as Keith Hine, laying it onto areas um, of no dig on my allotment. Um, put a four inch layer of no dig on. I've done it for the last three years. <coughs> That's the riddle finished compost um, that I get out to me, uh, which is very good. And then I'll mix it with some of the uh, multi purpose compost and uh, perlite or vermiculite and it, it, it seems to be quite good. It's a good brew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It does look nice. It's yeah. A good, yeah. And, and that's the remnants where after I've riddled it, um, that all the other, all, that'll go straight back into the big compost there. So, yeah. Yeah. Good. There we go. 
Where's my carrots? You ain't show me carrots. Pass me carrots. That's yours, eh? Yeah, that, that, that's, <coughs> that's me two rice carrot beds. Um, and then my rice bed, this is at the top of my allotment. Uh, I've got to clear them out then, then and uh, get the remnants of the carrots out. Uh, that's a, a chimney pot that I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll fill that with fuchsias um, in the summer. And it just trails down, it's uh, quite good. That's the bottom end of my plot. That area where the hoops are and to the left, that's my no-dig area where I I uh, layer the compost. There's actually uh, one, two, three, four. There's five beds of, <laughs> of no-dig there with a small and your phone holds all your yeah. passwords. Yeah. You are. Do you know your phone holds all your passwords that you've saved? No. How do you, 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 you find the beds with the no dig? Cheers, Colin, mate. Sorry, what was that question? How do you find the weeds with the no dig? Uh, yeah, yeah. Virtually, virtually non existent. Yeah. Uh, you can go over, you can have weeds, anything that comes Just off. Um, Hang on, Colin. Somebody's can talking in the background. Can you mute yourself? Password or username. Who's talking about passwords? Oh, where's one? Yeah, I, there's, a, there's a chat called. Um, I follow Can him you on YouTube. Oh, God, it's fine. Nice. If you don't dig, you should get very little w uh, weeds whatsoever. Yeah. Bring yeah, I, I, I follow a man called Charles Darwin. Not Charles Darwin, Charles. I can't remember his surname. <laughs> down down, 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 down near, Yeah, down near me. Um, he's not far away. He's about half an hour away. And, I'm, and I must admit, I need to go and visit him and have a look. And he was on about the no, he's gone about no dig. And that's why yeah. I was talking to Mick about the mushroom compost because in my poly tunnel, it's all no dig. Oh, um, great nice beds at home in the garden, no dig. But the, the nice. beds in the um, sort of the plot, whatever you want to call it, that's what I was on about putting the uh, mushroom compost. And, um, I did, and, and the other question I wondered about. Airborne. The other thing I, I wondered about is, is it's growing brassicas in, with the no dig because of the um, loose soil. Would you find that a problem? No, I do. Like I do. No, I didn't. Uh, the 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 roots go down into and they just hold themselves. I didn't find it a problem at all. Even actually, I tried it with potatoes as well. Just placing, you're scraping away the compost, placing the tubers on the bottom of the undug part, and just uh, uh, covering them up. And I had, I had a very good crop. Um, and I didn't, in, in one part, I didn't even earth them up. It was yeah, astonishing. Yeah, I'm having, I'm having to try all these new methods now because um, I'm, I'm physically not able to do the digging. So you know. See the try new it. methods and see whether they work. Or well, I'm physically out. able, but I just get the rotavator out. <laughs> <laughs> That's cruel to worms. Yeah, it's not good for the soil. Yeah, right. Moving on. This is Bert collecting molehills. No. He's a good. You'll learn your lot. If it's <laughs> somebody collecting molehills, you think, oh, a gardener. Don't forget, if there's moles underneath, I'm there because I'm after the worms. Meaning, if there's worms there, it's bloody good soil. So a mole hill, they've riddled it for you, took all, out all the lumps, so go and nick it. <laughs> and if you get mole hills that size... <laughs> you <laughs> <trouble. laughs> I'll kill the bloody car. Right, these are my spare um, eight-ounce onions, tough ball. Paul and Andy had half of these each, the Saturday. Uh, another... Crap day weather wise, so I'm in the garage again. Shredding <laughs> my paper, dropping my uh, eggs. I smash them up by hand in a bag first, get them nice and small, then put them in my grinder and they come out that way. That's is my calcium. My shredded paper, which is obviously, as you know, my uh, old paperback books. The older the book, the quicker the breakdown. Right, I did a talk a couple of years ago down Plymouth. And uh, I went into, because I was in B&B, &B, 
pubs had shut, so I legged it for uh, the B and P. There was a what's it next door to it, off license. And I grabbed a couple of cans and so, I saw these beer nuts. I hadn't seen them for bloody years. <laughs> now these are salted nuts with the skins on. We used to get these in Singapore in Terra Barracks, and I, I hadn't seen nuts to come out of the mob. And I bought the bloody lot. What they don't show. <laughs> I tried to find, and you can't get them in the UK. Well, you can get them in the UK, but I bloody couldn't. And, uh, so if anybody knows where they can get them, recognise them, let me know. They Mick. Good. Mick. Yes. Am Amazon. Tried it. Oh, yeah. is, it oh, right. is it just is it just nuts with skins on? Is that it? Yeah. With salt, salted skins, yeah. Well, I've got some from Tesco's. Get out of it. That's bloody popular. Oh, they're in a mixed pack. Yeah, they're in a mixed pack of nuts and fruit and oh, that. Oh, yeah. Mm, these, these are pucker. Oh, <laughs> very good. I'll have another fruit. You can get them, but they, they send them from the States. Right, Black Country Wenches. I had a mate up from Carbon Gold. He supplied me with a few uh, goodies a few years back. And he, he couldn't believe we still call women wenches up here. I mean, Mate Donna is going to start gobbing off in a minute. Donna, can you talk proper? No, they, that, that's one of her groups there. I was going to explain now what I do. And it's in our garden club. And, and yeah. that's a good egg. Well, they, do, they, do, they, do, they do them on Amazon, the, the beer nuts. <laughs> good man. There we go. Have a perv. Donna, all yours. Hello. Bye. Bye. As you can see, I run Jasmine Road Community Gardens in Cape Till in Dudley in the West Midlands. I've also got Black Country Wenches. We've got our plot there. This is our gardens. This is a couple of years ago, so obviously this is pre-COVID. We've got a little stage where we have all sorts of events and people there. Uh, got, that's the mayor in the background there. We come to one of our open day events. Um, we basically have a community garden. We've got private plots with chickens, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got I've just created a, a project on the front which is um got your card stop flicking the back you <laughs> we've, we've got we've got private plots at the back of the garden and we've got like a little community garden at, at the front we're just putting raised beds into we've also got three polytunnels um we've got a kids club that we do the house we've got a, a children's nature school mm. and we've got a kids growing vegetable club called the veggie gang gardening club which we're now doing online um, growing sessions. We did one on Saturday. That was us doing bird feeders the other week, which is very, it was very interesting. We went and hung them in the garden. This is our house. Obviously, you can see we have the little events in there. And we do cooking classes and craft classes. Lovely. Um, what else have we got? That's, that's, one of our, that's, one of, that's one of our polytunnels. Oh. We've now got a bed in there for the kids' club, and Glenn's got one for his chilies because he's in competition with Paul. <laughs> Good so, size um, bottle, that is, isn't it? Yeah. Boston. This that there's a picture of the bird feeders. That was there from that that couple was from down Oxford the other weekend. They logged on through another friend of ours and they made the bird feeders. That was peanut butter with uh, bird seed, and then we did Cheerio bird feeders. Cooking them palace. <laughs> 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 that's me. That's doing my little sign <clears throat> for the uh, guys. That's my little boy. That's Connor. So even in the snow, you can play in the snow. You can get the kids to use their imagination. That's the whole point of why we created the... It's called Wild Things Nature School. And those are our raised beds. That, they've gone in about six weeks ago. I'm just in the middle of filling them. And that will become our community project where everyone can come and have a go at growing in. I've never grown anything before in the life. Right. Everyone have a, have a right. play in right. what we do. Have a cup of tea and coffee and some cake. And it's just a very friendly place. We, we don't... You know, because it's a community garden, we don't charge anyone to have a piece of ground there. It's, it's Amazing. Nice. Love it. Yeah, it's really nice. Sounds good. Got some flat as well, oh, can't Fantastic. Yeah, very flat. Yeah. Busted. We've got about, got about 46 chickens as well. So we've got lots of chickens. You, you funded all yourself, Donna? It's, oh. we, we've got a charity. We've got a friend. That's, that's it now. Yeah. Um, we do, we don't, obviously, like everybody else, rely on events and open yeah. days and plant yeah. sales. But we can't do anything this year. But we, well, uh, what, what do you do with the, the eggs off the chickens? Graham sells them all, and oh. then we get a few spares. But he's, he's, I'm currently in the process of doing like a little educational thing with the kids. So I'm going to get some different breeds of chickens and breed them. 
so we, they can see them go from the egg into the incubator and obviously grow up. Like, knowing the kids don't know where their food comes from. I've had this with numerous growing things. Well, Mick will tell you as well. With all the kids at the school, they don't know where the food comes from. Mm. Show, them, show, them, show them a pea and they'll go, well, that's the goes. Yeah, take go, birds on. And you go in, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, it's... like tomorrow, where does tomorrow come from? Tools bottle, no. Get off the no, market. Over, <laughs> over the back there, the green over the back. We can break those down as well. We're going to put them into our compost space. That was an old shed that's all fallen. But along that side, the back side behind that big plant, we've got all reservoirs as well, water reservoirs that pump the water around the whole garden. Hmm. And they, they, they go into all the, all the polytons. <coughs> Everything is fed by um, reservoirs. So have, you been, have you been given that land by the council or what? It was years ago, yeah. It's, about, it's been about 20 years now. We, we pay them a minimal rent. We've got a house that's attached to it, which is our office. But, oh, really? uh, yeah, just, just that's one of my latest volunteers. Really. He's come to us through the Black Country Mental Health Foundation. He hadn't been out the house for eight years, so he um come to us and his first job was to write a pallet to him now to school. Like, he really enjoyed doing that and sit by it. Had a check in the money already. Brilliant, you know, it's, man, that's great. It says here, been in doubt for this, but you enjoy your MB. Your monthly fee has been charged to your visa. I'm just talking in the background. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> mute, Paul, mute, Paul, mute. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. We do get some donations. Unfortunately, the other week we were actually broken into up the gardens. They got in through the fence and they took they took our petty cash money, about hundred pounds, and they took three dozen eggs off the chickens. And then they came back the second night and they broke into our metal storage can units on the car park. One had got the CCTV in, the other one had got all the power tools, which they then decided to take off in our wheelie bin. But luckily, the local community have been really, really good and they've rallied round and we've had GoFundMe page and we've had this, that and the other. Those are two of my my, no, my little volunteers. They're, 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 seat on the right is a local resident. He's come and just volunteered to help. And JJ, again, he's, he, he's off the estate. So it's lovely, but uh, yeah. we've had a lot of lot of support for the breaking, and then we had someone come and, and fix the fence for us. So there's a that's how our back garden used to look. That's that's before that's before, and then there's a picture of afterwards. There we go. It took him two days um, to put them. I'm going to put put a little veg bed out there now for the like a kitchen garden type thing. People can sit there and have a cup of tea at the house. And that's our our plot in full bloom at the front. There's the fire the fire starters. I love having a fire. <laughs> we've got a couple of fire freaks. Yeah, we've got we've got a lot. Oh yeah. Oh, I forgot about that one. Yeah, that one uh, first in Wombin Carnival. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I just speak though for a second, uh, yes. Glenn, Don's partner? Um, Don has been at the allotment for three years now, yeah. and it was it, it used to be a a good place in Dudley, well respected by the community. And it just slowly went downhill. Um, People were leaving, weren't they? Thinking a lack of funding, a lack of interest with the councillors. Donna started there with just a plot. And that was it, wasn't it? Once a week. And now she's running the gardens. And I want to say that what she's achieved in such little time to turn the place around and put it back in the community of Dudley is, is a great job. It's, it's now becoming a full-time job as well. I worked four days a week. That's becoming a full-time job as well. <laughs> I'm running out of time. But I enjoy it. And it's, uh, my inspiration was Mick. So I have to say thank you to Mick because I'm determined to get the kids growing. Because he, he started it all, so I'm carrying it on. So. Just, well done, mm. Donna. You have a start. Um, want, to find, want to find Donna on Facebook, the pages, or contact Mick, and Mick will give you Don, Donna's details. But we can share. Let's be a big community. Those are my three, our three lads there. That was uh, Jake and, and Graham. They're in the seventies, but they're our maintenance blokes. And we've got volunteers that come on a Tuesday and a Thursday with additional needs. And that was us doing the abseil with Mick, who very kindly volunteered oh. himself and down Dudley Castle with us. <laughs> <laughs> where, 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 where was that at, Donna? Dudley Castle. Dudley. That was to raise money for a defibrillator. We did it with sick and more staff, me, my club group, uh, St John's Ambulance, two local councillors, and we decided to jump up top of Dudley Castle. We went raised over a thousand pounds for defibrillator. So we were very proud of ourselves on that day. Scary, but very good. <laughs> Brilliant. Cheers, Donna. Brilliant. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.
Yeah. Right, when I was in the fire service, this was uh, a few years back, we used to do a lot of charity events, and this one was called Nuns on the Run, basically. <laughs> and uh, you had to be in pairs, and we was handcuffed together. This was just tied together with string, because it was just for the photo. But on the, the event today, we was handcuffed together. So that's me and my mate on the right, Chris. And uh, you either get dropped off in Land's End or John O'Groats. And you had to make your way back to Birmingham Fire Station <laughs> over the weekend. <laughs> you got no money whatsoever. You got <laughs> nothing. No phones, sod all. And you had to make your way back. But the small print, the cops was after you. Because all the police forces was told, if you see a couple of nuns walk in the streets, pick them up and take them back to Land's End. Oh, no. oh, no. oh no. Luckily, we was dropped off. Me and Chris, we went down south and we was dropped off a land then. And his sister uh, lived in Bristol. So he says, right, all we got to do is make our way to Bristol. And we got away with, without being picked up. And twice being on our way, we saw two cop cars with past us, with nuns in the back, meaning they were <laughs> straight back. Uh, and again. Very good. <laughs> Uh, but we did get to Bristol because it was on a Friday afternoon. I think we started at uh, midday because it was Friday. Like finished, people finished work. We, we legged it in this boozer, and it was right in the uh, an estate where there's loads of work, office blocks and whatever. And the uh, people was asking what we was doing. We said, obviously, we got a bucket. We said we're collecting for charity. Told him what we was doing, and we come out there. We've pissed as farts. Everybody's buying us a drink. I was throwing money in our buckets. They was taking the, the buckets around to all the boozers. And everybody kept buying us beer. But the small print, if I wanted a piddle, I got a ticket eight with me because we man coughed together. <laughs> I mean, we cheat and, and pick the padlock, which some of them did. But we says, no, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it properly. So if I want a number two, two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> come back with me. But it, that was a, a brilliant weekend. <laughs> Nuns on the run, it was called. 100 firefighters handcuffed in pairs. Dropped off. Not talk. being rude, i got to shoot, Nick. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, Nick. Cheers, Nick. Bye. 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 That was going back to uh, Brum Central. That was the news reporter. Right, well, Gareth Opcroft, he's a mate from Sheffield. He does me charge. Well, he does loads of stuff. Uh, Eco Thrive, his, his website. Where his good lad is. Right, this is where I got uh, in in the quagmire. BBC Gardens World Live. This is where I used to talk in the the big arena. And you got Joe Swift there. To, uh, me. Then you got Carol Klein, quarter past half three. Oh, now, that, that one shit. below was me talking twenty past four when everybody was going on. <laughs> And I, I put extra because all I put on was compost and uh, no decultivation. So I put oh. extra. Um, Mycorrhiza fungi, saw food web, and everything else, which I got a bollocking over. I shouldn't have put that on. And because I got a, a bigger audience than Joe Swift and Carol Klein, once he'd on found out and he threw me out. It, and then it was over this talk. I had a bigger audience than them. Anyway, it's okay. <laughs> Right, this lot here. <laughs> Where is he? Goodness me. Oh, God. Uh, right, this is um, obviously Gillies under lights. Matt? Matt from Mason Kent. Are you on here? No, nah, these two it is. He sent me a couple of photos. So that, that's how he is into his chilies. Paul, you'll, you'll be bloody jealous of this lot here. And uh, there's his raised beds, which is, uh, we've been mentioning a, a couple of things tonight. You don't need boards for raised beds. A, a raised bed is just obviously a raised bed. Mm. You've got your pathways around the outsides. Eventually, when if you can afford the, the boards or whatever you use, bricks or whatever, then you can raise them. But usually use boards if you want to iron them a bit more. As long as you don't walk on it, you don't have to dig, which is the <coughs> main thing about it. Okay. Just when you're finished out. 
Right, seedlings, whether these are uh, onions I've just pricked out or leeks or whatever. Obviously, when they'll be pricked out, you've got to help them out with my wires. So, I'm so getting these small, small wires around. And don't forget oh. these, these seedlings because they've st still got the seed head on the end, which I'm still taking food from that seed. Yeah. Me? Yes. Can I just ask? I bought some of that wire from Wilco's. Yeah. Is mine's just straight wire? Is that what that is? And you've just yeah circled it round at the top, yeah. so it's nothing. Just it, it's not nine, designed. Cut it off about nine inches long, and get a right. a pritch stick or a tipex bottle. Right. Not, that's how I get my top on there. Right. Um, good. I wasn't sure if you were, you'd got yeah. the. They were specially made like that. Yeah, I think that's oh, on okay. last year's YouTube, uh, last year, last week's one. But the I couldn't get in last week. Oh, it's on, uh, what's it, YouTube? I, I, I did watch it on YouTube. I didn't see the, yeah, I must have oh, missed that. Might have been the week of hour. Well, all you're doing is helping them out. Don't forget, these are young seedlings. Mm. Just help them out. Don't forget, if these are hanging over, that, them straining to hold upright. Mm. Hot leaks are still doing well. I'm going to have a purr with the roots later on, see if they need potting on. Right, watering. This is a, a small watering can, but if you, if you do use a watering can and the compost is dry, when you do water, that compost is just going to run straight off because it hasn't soaked in. So the smaller the spout or whatever you're using, the better. So I'll start using these first. If you can't get hold of them, then I've my nice little one there. It's got a nice long spout with just a small nozzle on the end. But if I want it even smaller, I'll just put my finger over the end so it's just trickling out. Then I can go all over the compost. It doesn't wash the compost away. And you see them, lot of there, dry as a boon. Plus they need a few wires on them. So there's my wires again. Go so, and there's a, I hmm. think, nine <laughs> inches in length, six inches in length, and the longest one, nine inches. So to get a six inch, it starts off at nine <laughs> wire. And by the time you put your loop on, you've got a six inch. Right. And I, I just bung them on. Carrots, which I started off in the heat, as you can see now, the seed leaves are on the outside, and the true leaves are just got, started coming up through the oh. middle. It's blurred, but you can uh, make it out. Yeah. And also the rainwater, which is in the bucket in the warm end of the greenhouse, that is topped up. Right, this is the cold end of the greenhouse. Strawberries. Now, we, well, it's supposed to be um, warming up from today. It's still blue mm. out there. So, say from tomorrow, it's going to warming up. So, my strawberries, which are in that hanging basket there. I've got it. Yeah, new growth coming through. I should take the old leaves off, as you can see beside them. So this will go out next week, meaning do get some rain. Then obviously it's starting back into life again. But uh, we've had some good bloody frosts. So, so the cold end of my greenhouse, because it was four or five outside, it's, it's got to be minus down to zero in here. But we got away with it. So I'm getting my watering and they're going out next week. Right, this is something I saw off YouTube during the week. The the Americans, I love them. Now I saw some of it. Now this uh, the follow has got has got about, I don't know, eighty thousand people following her. And people are believing what it puts on here. Oh. It's it's summit with basically if you can see the onions behind her, that started onions off. And then halfway through growth, it just chops them off with scissors. It cuts the top off. The scissors helps them out. And then a couple of weeks after that, or a month after that, it's, it's then what they call spooning. They then take all the compost from around the bulb itself, the onion. No. Nearly topples over. I thought, what the bloody hell? Now, it, people follow her. And if they ain't got a bloody clue, they ain't going to do this. Now, if you could cut that much off at one <laughs> Don't forget, you've cut the new shoots off. That one he was growing. Yeah. He's been having a check in growth. Oh, Betty. Just bloody leave him alone. <laughs> right, that was an old card. Somebody sent me, um, bloody hell, five, five years ago now. Just me piddling on the compost. <laughs> if you want to piddle, piddle on the compost. 
bastard. That's cold's old not me. Ten years at least. <laughs> Colin, these yours? Yes, mate. We've seen those. Yeah. Good. Right, this one is the Edible Garden Show. Me and Colin <laughs> in, the, yeah. out in the background. Edible Garden Show. This used to be at Stoneley, Staffordshire. We did this show for four or five years. James Wong used to run it, but he used to live down in London. And he didn't like travelling up to Stoneley for the weekend. Mm. So he moved it down to London. But uh, that was a good show, that was. And this was to get our, the, our kids involved. This was my kids from Casmon Primary School when we did the Gardy Club up there. See, Alf on the bottom right, he was a little horror. What about the girl on the bottom left? A pain in the arrows, Molly. Yeah, I'm on, it's my Molly. <laughs> <laughs> but they used to love it. <laughs> what someone's asked me about raised bed ingredients, so I'll put these on again. Just for you, and my compost ingredients. I know you ain't got time to write them down, but uh, this will be on uh, my YouTube blog tomorrow. So get it on there, then you can pause it. Right, this was in the sun a couple of days ago, so it's got to be true. <laughs> Our mate from uh, North Korea, he's telling everybody to save their number twos and number ones in his compost. No, <laughs> this is our little avocado he bunged in. See the roots coming? Oh, wow. in. God. Yeah. Try to get them in focus. because they ain't too bad from a camera. And then it spurs you from the top. Oh. Right, brassicas. As we're getting close there, first true leaf coming through. <coughs> That's mm. Using the wires on the eight ounce onions again, bugging them up. Just to open them out, then give them a nice watering. Right, if you've got a, whatever you're using, plastic drinking cup, pot or whatever, don't forget that is a small raised bed. So I've just thrown the water in there, meaning I'm going to flood it. But you can't overwater a raised bed because you've got the drainage. So the plant will take up what it wants and everything else will drain through. Yeah. So it's better to overwater than underwater because everything will drop out anyway. Uh, Alstrom area. Somebody gave me these a uh, couple of weeks ago. There's a couple, because there's some of my day now that was bloody upside down, inside out or whatever. So that one more doing much. All that. And so I took them out. And you can see the roots have started coming out at the bottom. So I'd got them right end up. So I bunged them back in again. They're going away. Taters spouting nicely, slowly. They're being soon. Right, this is mate Jeffrey. He sent me a, a letter through the post from uh, Belgium. Robin Sods. Uh, postage, 5.73 euros, which is five pound in English. Mm. Five quid for a bloody letter. Oh. Robin Sods. It won't even sign for. Mm. They're going to shit on us now any way they can. Right, I tried just painkillers and paracetamol with me back injury, but I had to, in the end, I had to go and see me osteopath. Good private, well, he, he sorted me out, and that's my little mate in the waiting room. <laughs> I thought that was you, Mick. He's been waiting, bloody. <laughs> and tunnel up the back garden. This was what I was going to do the last couple of weeks or so. Was, uh, obviously, I had my gladys in here, and the straw is still on the top. You know, anything I plant out, I top dress with straw, it stops the base from drying out. As you can see, the straw is still on there. So, obviously, I couldn't do that. So I should be doing that next week if me back holds up. And this is our youngest son. Uh, this is his. This is a sun trap the front of his house where he's got his little office where he works from. Uh, obviously, obviously has to work from home. And uh, he has a couple of plants, and uh, it <laughs> he looks after them and in his house like that little trap on the right. That was from um, Halloween, and I can remember getting them from Little. Now mine bloody died. Moons ago, he's just come back to bloody growth again. Oh. <laughs> you don't even ferret on it, you know, it's hard in a row. We've had some good frost, first time ever. My tap's gone solid. Yeah, don't forget. 
That there's got a protection either side, the shed, the back wall, and you think there's a bit of protection from the frost, but we've had some bloody good frosts. Mm. Uh, where was I going around down here? Aberdeenshire during the week, minus 22. Goodness me. Bloody hell. That, that's too bloody cold, that is. Anybody else during the week? Check it over. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Seen that. <laughs> I've had a couple of, not run ins, but um, <coughs> when I was chairman of Dudley Horticultural Advisory Council, he's trying to get all our, because we knew there was cutbacks, he's trying to get all Dudley allotment owners to go self governing because we knew there's going to be cutbacks, you're going to be left on your own. And I had to go to Sandwell Council and to Eddie for the Worcester to try and talk them into being self governed. And uh, I've, I've put her on because some of them, some of the garden groups or whatever plots in the sticks because the, the, the rules are that outdated and then stuck in the ways and they won't do sod all. You know, the ones that didn't go self governed and they're in the quagmire because they're stuck. I've got no help whatsoever. Right, if you're on the internet, <coughs> uh, there's a chap here about slicing, he's put something on about slicing through your taters. This is common sense. I can remember my grandfather doing this. But it's beekeeping, gardening. That, that's what he does, uh, started off doing. But that's worth a nose if you want to if you get bored. Beekeeping, gardening on YouTube. And have a look at his channel. And that's so much else to do because he's a good chilli man as well. And his bell peppers. Poor you would like him. But he talks you through that and all. Paul, can I ask Paul a question? If you're still here, or Paul, I'm here. I'm here. All right. Do you, do, you, do you sell your spare chilies? Will you have... No, they're no. all for you. I'll just give them. Oh, Mick had some off me last year. All right. I say I'm willing to buy some spare if you've got any. Because I, I had, last year, last year I had uh, in my ton of up the garden, I had 64 plants oh. and I think. 15 over the road, not many over the road. Oh. So, well, I've got, I've got, well, I've got many coming up at the moment. Some, I put some in, they're not germinated. And no, every time I've tried to germinate not. them, black olive, and they're never germinated since I've had them. So, no, I'm the rest, the rest, the rest, I'm using a uh, Foley's feed now on them. I've never done before. I'm trying cold tea. I'm giving that a whack. Mm. All right, mate. Yeah. Oh, oh. Is it too late to sow some? No, no. Late, oh, no, no I'll get some more and, and re sow, I think. Colin, you get the Chinese boxes, some kitchen roll, put the kitchen roll in, some boiling water or some lukewarm water, put your seeds in for a week and you might see some germination on, then put them into your compost. Mm -hmm. That's the takeaway you get the plastic containers. Mm. Right, okay. All right. Well, do we put the lid on? Yeah, put the lid on. With the holes in? No, no just... holes in. No holes in. Run, run that past us again. That was, uh, you put... Chinese, Chinese tub. Yeah. Kitchen roll. Lukewarm water and put how many seeds you want to put in and put a label on, as you know, what's what it is. And after about seven days, check them. Sometimes I had some germinating in less than seven days. You can see how a little much, icon. How much, how much water? Just enough to get the soak the kitchen roll up and make sure you oh, don't dry out. Make sure you don't dry out. Yeah, yeah. you got you got to check them every other day. So if it dries yeah. out, you have lost them. Right, mine did all right. They germinated most of them. Yeah. And do, put, why, why does that? Why is that way preferable to just putting them in the compost? Because the it, kitchen roll has got some activator in it. I don't know what it is. But I've been told that actually it activates the seeds and plus the warm. It's warmer in water. I yeah. got the yeah. water. I got the warm. It's got to be warm. I'm going to do yeah. that tonight. Yeah. Warm. I'll try that, Paul, tomorrow. Try that. Yeah. It, it, it does work. I'll poke it sitting there saying nothing. It does work. I do it all the while. We know any different types of seeds. But what yeah. I use is, is just ordinary freezer bags. Yeah. Fold the kitchen roll, run it under the hot water tap, basically That's squeeze it. it out, open it up, pay the seeds in, close it up in a freezer bag and then in the airing cupboard. The oh, same thing, same product. Hundred percent yeah. works every time. Yeah. Real. Hmm. Nice. Okay, we'll try that. 
We'll report back on that. <laughs> you know, not, you know, got a load of empty pots. Then, I mean, Michael says plant up everything like that. So before we put them in the garden, well, that's just the same thing, isn't it? If they're growing, when you put them in the pots and put them back in the propagator, you're only planting live plants. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Mm. Like, I think and when you're transplanting them, when they've started to germinate, how you, you're going to have to be really careful. Oh, yeah. No, you can. Not, you well, can see, you can see the iron, can you? Yeah, at the minute, I've got some of them little uh, white pots the same as that, drinking things. I've already filled them half up with compost and watered it, and I've actually got them in a tray. It's sitting on top of a T5 light, so they're all warm, ready for, as soon as they've grown, I'll just drop them on and then sprinkle a little bit of compost on top of them. That way you're not forcing the root in and damaging the root. Yeah. Mm. Oh, aren't we? Joanne, as soon as they've germinated on the tissue, yeah, you that bit of tissue. I mean, it doesn't matter if you put the tissue in with it. Oh, no, oh, right. okay. so so if you got the root, so if you got a little bit goes into oh. the uh, kitchen towel, right? So you have to cut around it with some scissors, otherwise, if you try to ease it off, you'll snap the root. Yeah, you're gonna so if you can't it. get it off easy right. if you left it in there too long, just hmm. a pair of scissors, cut it out like a postage stamp, and lay it down. Or just get a small pair of tweezers right, and okay. sort it, put it there. Ah, lost it. Right, back to me onions. Because yeah. I only got half a dozen, I'm using a plastic drinking cup, as you can see. As normal, there's two come up healthy, and there's others still haven't... Well, there's one come through, but meaning I'm not going to empty the lot out because I've only got two there to get out. So I'm going to get me fork right underneath and get the lot out. Which I've done there. Right, mockers or fungi. <coughs> Been using this for moons. Anything new that comes out for the gardener, I look into it and then I find out who's flogging the best one and then I buy it bulk. Mockers or fungi. There is a uh, ecto and endo mycorrhizae. They've been around for centuries. It's took our big boys quite a few years to find out what they are. They're still finding new mycorrhizae every couple of months or whatever. And then they look into it to see what it's good for. Trees, fruit, veg, whatever. Oh, yeah. It's got ecto and endo mycorrhizae. Okay. You've got to be oh. careful for what you're using. The first one um, the RHS bought out, Wilco used to flog it. And it's got um, a picture of roses on the front. And this is good for all. Now, people looking at that and think, oh, good for all. That means it's good for all, for what the gardener grows. But it, no, it isn't. It's good for all roses. That's what they missed off. It's only good for roses because it's only got the ecto mycorrhizae in there. And they made a bomb, obviously, because it was new and they come out. But you've got to... That's what I did. I rang everybody up and I found out who was uh, making the best one with the most... Well, the best compost, uh, best mycorrhizae for the fruit and veg man. And that's why I buy bulk from Symbio. But all you need is one pinch in the hole when you're potting on. If you're doing something like this, I've been me on with my dimmer, and all you need is one little pinch. It's got to touch the root to work. So you've made your hole, you're going to put it in the hole. And when you plant up, that root is going to touch it because you've just put it in the hole. When you've potted some of it on, the next thing you're going to do is water it because you've just planted it. <clears throat> the mycorrhizae fungi comes into operation as soon as it's moisture, which you've just watered it, so it comes into operation straight away. It's exactly the si same as making a wine. When you put yeast in, that is your kickstart for the wine. This mycorrhizae fungi is a kickstart for the bacteria to get going. You see and bought it with the, with the roots of the plant. And the, the good thing about this, one application per life of the plant. So I then rung them up. I says, all right, then I've got to establish fruit trees on the plot. What do I do about them? Well, I said, obviously, if it's a fruit tree, it's going to be a handful more than a pinch because it's a bloody big tree. It's got big root structure. But what, it's got to eat a root to work. So I had to go down a couple of feet, eat a root, and then put it in, spread it out, water it. It'll then take two or three weeks to forget to establish that root structure on a fruit tree. But once you've done it, you'll see the difference after a couple of years and you've done it then for the rest of his life. 
the cock up I made when I started using it in the greenhouse, it was that good. I was running out of room in the greenhouse because everything grew that well. And now I just, this is just for a trial. Somebody asked about how I use it to show me how they use it. But it is excellent. <clears throat> that's the root grow out of one of the, I think that was at the, um, the fruit catalogue. And that's the one they uh, fruit grow. But there it is, 150 gram for six quid, Robin Sods. Mine's three times cheaper and uh, better than their mycorrhizal fungi. So if anybody's interested, I'll flog them five in a bag. So two Mick, times quid, yes. Um, if you're using that in the plastic cups, would you then yeah. not not use it when you put them in the ground? No, <laughs> no. You, no. You need one application per life. Okay. If you've got room in the greenhouse... And you're potting hey, on. Hey, me. Use it then. Me. Yes. How do you comp how do you write that against something like charge? Charges on your feed. This is mycorrhizal fungi. It colonizes the root structure. <coughs> the roots will come out 30, 40 feet more. They, they colonize the root. Whatever you're planting, they colonize that root structure. And they both feed off each other. Symbiotic. And they're out. It's, it's nature. Before I used to make my own leaf mould, I used to cheat. I used to go to a forest or a wood and I used to scrape the leaf mould up. And behind was white fibrous roots. That was mycorrhizal fungi. It took our big boys 20 odd year to find out what it was. <laughs> but it was good, a good mycorrhizal. Well, it's bloody obvious if it's under bloody leaf mould. But it then took them another 20 odd year to make it. And that's what they've done. So it is just nature working away. If it's left in some devices and no disturbance, the bacteria and fungi will get going, and that's what's working. And it is superb stuff. It is, mate. I, I was on tomatoes, and no, no. end of the season, I dug mine up. You know, told me to use it, try it. Yeah. I had tomato roots six foot long. Yeah. I measured them. Yeah. That, that good bloody loop. I do. Yeah. Excellent stuff. This is somebody else. This is uh, somebody put up, because I'm on uh, quite a few raised bed groups. This is one in the States. And uh, that was all saying, bloody hell, that's brilliant. I says, no, it ain't. You don't fall out with me, though, luckily. But uh, we're, <laughs> can you see me out on that photo? Yeah. 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 Right, that one there, I sent him that photo. I says, right, are you going to get him out? Or that one there, are you going to get him out without disturbing him, these? Or that one. I said, if you put them like that, well, that, that's what I first sell to him. I said, you need gaps in between your beds so he can reach the middle from either side. He said, the corner parts of the diagram. Uh, I said, the raised beds are what you have now. So if you have extra two beds, plus you can reach the middle of the bed from either side without stretching or disturbing anything else. I'm all raised beds four foot wide, as I don't tread on them anymore. I haven't dug for 30 odd here. That's why worms were invented. At the end of the season, once the bed is empty, I top dress with my old made compost or manure. I then water and cover with the weed suppressant. Nature will now get to work and dig the beds for me, ready to use within two weeks, weather permitting. <laughs> That's what I sent to him. Those are exactly the same beds, number of beds what he had but he got an extra two beds as well by just putting a gap in between all of them so he can walk down either side. But the beds that he did was just for show, like that. People are impressed by it. I mean, it does look impressing. But are you going to get him out? Without not, climbing not, over these two? Not practical, things? is it? Not practical. But he, he come back and he, he uh, thanked me for my uh, input. And he's now looking into it. Meaning, people who buy that, eventually, they're going to struggle to get produce out. So, he's looking into it. Crap. Oh, wow. mm. Cradley oh. Market, Friday, Fish Market. Got some crab. Ate it. I thought, hmm, oyster shells, crab shells. Oh, uh, Thank you, Tom. Calcium. So, I put them in the, not on hot, put the next one down for a couple of minutes. Oh. Are bits of burning? No. Are Are they? Bits of Bloody burning. I don't know. 
Smashed him up. Uh, and then bumped him in with a little chap. So there's have you ever done? Have you ever yeah. done muscle shells, Mick? You no, I can't get older on. Nice. Obviously, if I could get older, I'd bloody use any shell. Yeah, that's right. I did. I, we had some muscles for Valentine's last night, so I, I crushed them up and put them in the grinder today. I baked Good, them man. first. Yeah. Good, man. That's what I like. You're as soft as me. Well, I know that anyway. <laughs> right, fruit trees. If you ain't got any and you're thinking about them, now is the time to get them or now is the time to plant them. I still uh, picking out because I've got it written down here. There's that much crap. These are from Pomona Fruits. Uh, fruit trees lifting when dormant. This is late November to late April. That's when they lift their fruit trees and uh, plant, uh, send them out. So now is the ideal time. So if you have any. And this was also in the, the same catalogue. I used these years ago when I first had raised beds and the work was my, don't forget me, raised beds. It was that full of my compost and manure. There's that many worms in. The moles had a bloody field day. I was nicking all my worms, toppling all my plants. So I then looked at different things and there was mole scarers and I saw these dog tablets. You see the Belgium or whatever. But I had them as well. All the bloody hounds come in. Come here, Rushi. I sent for these as well. He's my baby. <laughs> I sent for these dog tablets. The bloody the mole ate them all. The scent they're supposed to dish off. That's supposed to repel everything. He bloody ate them. My neighbour had moles in the lawn. I think he put some chewing gum down the holes. Worked. Oh, you just chewing gum put them first. You just no, no, just leave it all odd because it's like a sweet smell and it, huh. it fills the digestion, so it just kills them. Oh, you cool, dude. Cr cruel, but what's this here? horrible. I've got more orange face on there. Okay, Collie put this on about plastic cups. Did you get any, mate? I ain't looked into it yet. I, I'm just gonna, I'll just show that the troops in case anybody's after any. Yeah. So, you might, you might, uh, uh get a pack and put it in the shed you know and uh get rid of them but 2000 for 18 quid 22 quid it seemed good good deal to me yeah. is that colin was at ebay again you've been on again uh yeah i didn't buy any i was only i was only i was only doing some research for mick because he, he uh mm. looking on the office mate <laughs> we'll, we'll go and put the price up to what was it a couple of quid for 30. yeah yeah. Thirty. Well, it used to be hundred. Robinson. I just got um. I got a hundred a couple of days ago from Pound Stretcher. That's hundred for a pound. Oh. oh. Well, oh. our Pound Stretcher's closing down, so there's twenty percent off everything. Yeah. So eighty p for a hundred. So I got a couple of packs. That was good. Off stage. Yeah. Another one getting the bug. Like, Why are all? <laughs> right. I was here last Sunday. Warren's all ride your stables. This is where what we call heaven. Our biggest pile of our shit. I shouldn't see the dog behind me. And uh, basically, that I'm selling everything off. And the muck behind her, they was flogging that off and all. So I messaged her. I said, oh, us Garden is still okay to pick up manure. Hi, right, Mick. The muck heap is currently being moved by heavy plant machinery oh, for the next couple of days and isn't accessible. You are welcome in the future, however. Meaning, good thing, because I can still get the muck. But I think I'm going to miss, well, I'm going to be at, come on stuck with me liquid off manure, like when it used to rain. Uh, right, this is later on this afternoon, the situation of the greenhouse at the moment. So, mm. luckily I went out then, because it just started bloody piddling again. Heaven's open. So I've just opened the front door of the greenhouse. Obviously, I've still got eating on in the end, so I've still got my little door on. So this first lot is a cold end of the greenhouse. That will be thrown out next week, as I've mentioned, as soon as we get warmer. My spud, which I potted on, is still doing well. The one next to him, he ain't showed signs yet. That was the 30th and the 12th. Don't forget, cold end of the greenhouse. No sign of my leaks uh, yet. That was the 26th of the 1st. And the uh, second lot of onion sets coming 
Joy coming through in the cold end. Carrot Slave come through as well. Don't forget, we're still in the cold in the greenhouse. So, although they, you got heat up the other end, these have still come through, but uh, they're a couple of weeks behind, obviously. Lots there, not as good as our mates. Right, take the old door off, have a perv inside. <coughs> Ostromeria, these are being bloody flowers soon. I might, once they are get to this stage, I'm going to throw these in the cold end of the greenhouse. Because uh, by next week, if I'm right, we should have got rid of all these frosts. Uh, so I'm going to throw them out. How have you grown the Alstromere isn't it, from seed? No, these are little um, shoots. Little bloody things I had. Me mate had them, but I hadn't got a greenhouse. I said I'd, I'd pot them on for her. But I'd never seen them come out this bloody small. There was only like little tubers, little spurts. I thought some of them were crap. But that just shows you... I mean, them, them bloody hardy plants, once you have got them, it takes summer to, to knock them out. I mean, we've had some bloody good frost and that they were still growing on the front. They were still in flower. Because that was up against the wall. But uh, as you can tell here, I'm a far, feisty buggers. So that's, that's the carrots in the warm end of the greenhouse. So this is the situation today. So that they put a bit more meat on them. And you can see there, He's still at 10, he's been kept at 10, which is 50 in funny money, which is good. Meaning that eater, which I had from uh, through fix, 20 quid, bloody boxed him. To say he's got a thermostat on as well, bloody brilliant. And uh, my water there, my rainwater is in the bucket, obviously at a uh, warm greenhouse temperature. Plus on top of that, I've got my compost. That compost used to be on top of there because I need the room now for growing. That is elevated on top of me bin just so I've got warm compost if I've got to pot anything on again. Because my pot leaves probably next week, I'll have a look at them and if they need potting on, I'll pot on. But if you pot anything on with cold compost, you're going to give that plant a checking growth, which is common sense in it. Just carry on the way you're going, look after them. And that's what I had tonight from Shinar's. Mm -mm. Jingle lazies. I love me fish. Look at that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Dinner. That's pudding. <laughs> <laughs> but our little, little, our youngest has come tonight and he, he's finished me book. And the trouble we had with, with the uh, Amazon, you know, that the end is the side of your, the book. Like if you put it in a, a what it, you got the name down the side as well. And, and that's what they was playing up about. But this is now ready to go, so that'll be going to Amazon tomorrow. That's, that's wow. a photo I took at you in this here, Hey? Yeah, that that's one. That's a photo I took you in I, I filmed you from there. They are, it's on, have you got it on your website? Yeah, I've still got it on there. Or... So that'll be out next week. Jolly good. Me? Hang on, there's a couple more questions I had during the week. Uh, Claire Birkin had mentioned comfrey as a top dressing. Somebody's told you can throw comfrey. Well, you can, yeah, you can do bloody anything. But uh, if you can chop that comfrey up first, meaning the smaller you get it, the, it's going to break down quicker. And that, that's what I've told her. And that's what it's done. Because as I looked at me, what's this? Me, uh, YouTube, what's this? The trial with the coffee grounds I was going to do as well. If you remember. Last week or the week before, somebody put a pure spent coffee grounds in, in one dollop and the worms they had in them, they were bloody hordes on them. Yeah, that's me, mate. Moisture. Yeah. It's just it's just in the bag I've got down the allotment. Yeah, brilliant. Are you are you back on your I can only see that saw folks? Are you back live now? No, it's the end screen, I think. Still there. What do you want to see? You <laughs> if you've been if you've finished. Just sod that off. How's that? There we go. Yeah. Oh, uh, they're in your garage, Mick. Hey, Mick. They're in your garage. <laughs> yeah. It's the bedroom. Yeah, <laughs> blind. So we spent coffee grounds. Hopefully, do that next week. Uh, plus top dressing me tunnel. Back permitting. My zooms are picking out up now with the garden clubs, because what they what they're doing because I've a. Uh, Obviously, cancelled me from last year and cancelled again if it was up for June this year. 
But what, what, what a few clubs are doing now is the Zooms. But obviously, being a Alden's, they said, oh, well, I ain't got a bloody clue about Zooming. I said, well, I'll start it like I do here. And then I'll send you a lot of the invite. And that's what I've started doing. Meaning all I've got to do is click onto it. And word is getting about slowly, luckily. But there's quite a few Zooms coming in, which I, which I want. Yeah. 